We are walking down Sherman Avenue, where Jim Barney grew up. You may know him better as Ernest P. Worrell. He starred in multiple movies, television shows, and commercials. That's right, he actually got his start as a very serious actor. He studied Shakespeare and did Hamlet, did a bunch of plays that were very serious. And then at some point, and we're gonna get into this a little bit more, but at some point he switched to that Ernest character that we all know and love. It was part of my childhood, part of Heather's childhood, part of your childhood too, I'm sure. We have found his childhood home. We're walking up to it now. We're gonna show it to you in just a moment. We're gonna tell you some of the things that he started figuring out as a child that led to later becoming Ernest. This is gonna be a fun one. And then we also are going to take you to his grave as well. And we cordially invite you to come along for the adventure. Come along. Back when Jim was just a little kid, there were no televisions really. People didn't tend to have TVs back then, it was radio. Families would gather around the radio, they would listen to the radio. Jim said he remembered listening to The Lone Ranger and different shows like that. That was entertainment back then. But at some point during his childhood, one house along this street had a television. And then Jim's parents decided they wanted a television also. So their house became just the second house in this neighborhood to have a TV at the time. And it's a good thing that they decided to get a television because his mother would put on cartoons while she was getting some work done. And it didn't take long for Jim to start imitating cartoon characters. That's when she decided to put his talents to good use and enroll him in children's theater at the age of eight. Yeah, it's amazing because he had a great talent at imitating these characters. It wasn't just imitating the characters, it was also the fact that he had this great memory. They've called it a photographic memory. This is his house right here. They've called this a photographic memory that Jim had. Now, scientists kind of argue there might not be any such thing as an actual photographic memory, but the point is, he had a great memory. He remembered things very, very well. Now, there's a picture that his uncle, I think it's his uncle, but anyway, he's a biographer. He's written a book. His name is Justin Lloyd. He is actually the nephew of Jim Varney. He's written a book about this, about growing up uh, and about Jim Varney. So he has a picture posted on his page, which we'll throw up here in just a second. It's got Jim pictured right in this area here. You can see the window there. This area has been redone since then. And also these bushes have grown up. You can see the start of these bushes way back then. And then you could clearly see some of the stuff on the house over there. And Jim is standing right there. He's standing right here, somewhere in there, in the picture. And so that's that. Heather's smiling because, why? Well, because you're prancing around in front of someone's house oh, and you're on their, their uh, camera over oh, there. Yeah. So. I'm on the ring camera. So anyway, it's just too exciting. I couldn't help myself <laughs> to run up there and do that. Now let's walk right over here because I want to show you on the other side of these bushes, we're going to see the side of that house, if we can get a look at it. These bushes have grown up tremendously, but it's been quite a few years. But you can see the details on the side of the house that also show up in the picture on this house. <laughs> My <laughs> Heather will show us the right spot. There we go. Those windows right there, you can see in the picture with Barney over at his house. Now we were saying Jim started as a very serious actor, Shakespeare trained professional actor. And there's a quote from him that I wanted to read. He said, I told somebody the other day, they said, well, you started in Shakespeare, now you're doing Ernest. I said, yeah, isn't that funny? It's usually the other way around. You start with the light character and you work your way towards Shakespeare. Very strange, I never thought, no, I never thought Ernest would be the thing that would be a springboard for me. That's from The Importance of Being Earnest book, The Life of Actor Jim Varney. That's the, what I was trying to figure out earlier when I was talking about his nephew, Justin Lloyd. That is the book he wrote. They have a Facebook page. You guys go check it out. And that's how we were able to confirm this address as Jim's address when he was a child. Pretty cool. 
Jim Varney was the voice actor behind the slinky Datsun dog in Toy Story and Toy Story 2. His iconic character, Ernest, starred in several films, including Ernest Goes to Camp, Ernest Goes to Jail, Ernest Scared Stupid, and many more. We are now at Lexington Cemetery to pay respects to Jim Varney. Yeah, he kind of got his start, actually, with Johnny Cash on his variety show. And then he actually did get into serious acting, like we talked about, and he had some bit parts in movies. He even went out to L.A. and took part in a couple movies out there. But then there was a Screen Actors Guild protest that kind of shut down filmmaking for a period of time. This was around 1978, I think December of 1978. And after that, he had to come up with something else to do, and he had all these character ideas. So he moved back to Nashville, where he had been previously. His first commercial role was Sergeant Glory and ads for Purity Dairies trying to make those cows produce more milk. He was a very tough sergeant, apparently. He was working for this company called Cardin and Cherry at the time, and they got this contract, and they were going to do some spots for a dilapidated place called Beach Bend Park. It was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Now, this place was in such bad shape that they couldn't actually show the park because nobody would want to go there. They were planning to do an entire renovation of this park and get it in good shape. So they needed a character who was going to be funny, who was the kids were going to love and want to kind of interact with and get to know. And that was the character they came up with was indeed Ernest P. Whirl. The P stood for power tools. Why, I don't know, but it sounds right for him, right? Yeah, exactly. He was a powerhouse and he really knew how to make the kids laugh and even adults. So he took that from there and continued to work with this company. He focused on products and services that were common across the country. Now these were not services that would put him on national television. He was on local stations all over the country. And that great memory he had, this almost photographic type memory, allowed him to do a ton of different spots each day with different call stations, different radio stations, different TV stations, whatever it might be. Sometimes like 25 different commercials a day, they would be sent out to different stations around the country. So he might be doing a local air conditioning company in Lexington, and he might be doing a local air conditioning company out in Nashville, and he might be doing a dairy product in another town, and he might be doing utilities in another town. And people actually thought that he lived in their town. So people, all these people around the country think this guy lives in my town. He's a small town guy for this local company. And if they'd go out of town on a trip to Florida or something and see him down there, they'd be like, whoa, what's Ernest doing on TV down here? So that was one thing that made him stand out. Jim actually said at one point, quote, everybody thinks I'm an actor in their market. They really think I work for a local company. Jim was a very caring and compassionate person. He spent a lot of time with people that were dying, especially young children. A lot of children wanted to meet Ernest through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. There's an article in Nashville scene that came out shortly before, just a few months before Jim passed away. This was been, I believe, in December of 1999 or November when this article was written. He says that perhaps the most memorable was an eight-year-old girl. This girl wanted to have breakfast with Ernest. So he put on his gray flannel t-shirt, denim vest, khaki hat, and blue jeans. Varney met the girl for breakfast at Disney World. Quote, I got her a set of post earrings with her birthstone because she had just gotten her ears pierced, he recalled. She asked her mother if it would be all right if she could wear them in her casket so she could wear them to heaven. Then he goes on and says, I just made a surprise call from Ernest to a kid last week and he sounded just fine. About two days later, we found out he didn't make it. But there's a thing about kids. They accept things a lot of the time better than adults. It was a big thrill for them that Ernest was on the phone. You think, wow, I hope I've got two days left that I can get excited over a phone call. Now, when he was doing that interview, he had just been through a terrible year in his life. Actually a great year career-wise, but a terrible year because of his health. He had gone through a cancer scare that year. So he was having some trouble during the filming of Treehouse Hostage out in California. He was coughing up blood. He thought it was maybe the dry weather out there. He went to see a doctor and they found a fist sized tumor in his lung. The doctor wanted to have 
wanted him to have surgery immediately, but he was supposed to be filming for a movie with Billy Bob Thornton, and this was a big role for him. And actually, Billy Bob was able to move up production and do Jim's part a week early. It cost filmmakers a million dollars, but they wanted Jim in this movie called Daddy and Them. He did the filming a couple days later. He was in a hospital. He was on an operating table. They discovered that the tumor had actually pierced his heart. They created a window in there. They put him on ventilation. He went through all that. They found out he also had a tumor in his brain. They went through so much. He went through so much during that year and he was treated over and over again. He went through a bunch of surgeries. And at the time of this article in November of 1999, he thought he was doing great. He had regained most of his body weight. He was up close to 150 pounds, his normal weight. He was eating better. He felt better. He felt like everything was clear. And then for some reason over the next few months, it took a turn for the worse. And then on February 10th, of 2000, he passed away at his home in White House, Tennessee. You see the mellow yellow can over there. He did mellow yellow commercials. Looks like a little bunny rabbit down below. People have left change, dollar bill, bracelet, various other mementos, seashell for Jim. He has a Bible verse, Mark 10, 14. Suffer the little children to come unto me. And Jim did point out, something else I want to talk about was during that year where he suffered so much with his health, he said he gained a relationship with God. He got closer to God during that year. And so that was obviously the most important thing that he went through during that year was getting closer to God before his eventual death. Jim was absolutely an amazing guy. He touched so many people's lives, children, and just everybody who was around him, it really seemed like, and he continues to do so. And he never really had that attitude of, I'm better than you, I'm famous, or any of that kind of stuff. From reading interviews with people he knew, he was so kind to everybody who came up to him. He gave advice when people were filming, if it was their first time taking part in that sort of thing. Apparently, if people saw him on the street, he was very nice to them. He wasn't big on spending tons of money. His house wasn't anything spectacular. He just kind of lived a normal life. They said fame didn't really change him. If anything, it made him want to do something else. He didn't want to just be stuck with the earnest character. And it seems like he was at the point where that was going to happen. He was an amazing, dramatic actor as well. And it seemed like he was at the point where maybe his breakthrough was about to come for him. But unfortunately, it got cut short. But he did leave plenty of memories for all of us to enjoy. We still enjoy the earnest movies, and I'm sure you do too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.